All right, it's your boy Boomsday back with another video. Um, today we're reconning a Sundown Audio NSB4 version 418. We got four of these big things to sit there and recon. So, um, just like always, let's get to it. All right, so if you're familiar with my videos, you already know the first step go ahead and cut the surround out. Uh, new people, first time watching, hey, welcome to the channel. We're going to go ahead and get into this, and I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do it. All right, first things first, go ahead and take your gasket off. On these, they're kind of tight, but they're take off, if that's even a word. Always take your gasket off, first and foremost. Set that to the side. All right, next thing you're going to want to do is always make sure you have a nice and sharp blade. I cannot stress this enough. You don't want to do a whole lot of sawing. You want to do more slicing than anything, okay? So always make sure you have a very, very sharp blade. As sharp as you can get it, okay? All right. So once you have your very sharp blade, the first thing I like to do is cut the outside of the surround all the way around, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Poke it in. And just cut all the way around. All right, and you see it's cut there, all the way around. Oops, I didn't cut right here. Oops, there it goes. Now it's cut all the way around. All right, so once you cut the outside, now you're gonna cut the inner lip of the surround, okay? So put your blade in, same thing. All right, and there goes the surround. Big guy. All right. Next step, the easiest thing again, this is the way I do it. Next step would be to fold the cone over on top of itself, okay? So what you're gonna do, is just fold it on top of itself like that. This makes it easier for you to get to the spider landing so you can cut that out next. So just fold it on top of itself. And like I said, sometimes some subs are harder to do than others, but easiest thing to do, take your time and just get it out. You don't gotta be in a hurry. Take your time and make sure you're doing it right. So kind of break that, that cone up. All right. Once you got it built up, built up on top of itself like so. This is a big cone, sorry. Like I said, this is an 18-inch sub, you guys. So all right. Take your blade. You're gonna cut the spider. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. You're gonna go ahead and slice through that spider all the way around. These guys are very, very thick and tough, but sharp blade. That's why sharp blade is very important, you guys. These are some nice spiders on this one. But again, a sharp blade will go right through it every time. Oh, it comes right out. Ooh, a lot of heat on that one. Warm and everything still looks good on this one. Coil does too. All right, so once you got all those soft parts out of the way, the next step is take you some masking tape and you're gonna tape up that gap. You don't want anything falling in that gap that can hinder the recone from doing what it's supposed to do. You don't want no debris or anything to fall off in there while you're still cleaning the rest of the basket, okay? So just standard masking tape. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when I say the gap. The gap is right here, and that's where the voice coil fits, and it goes up and down. So you don't want nothing else to fall in there while you're cleaning up the basket and the spider landing and everything. So all you have to do is take some masking tape. Kind of hard to do it one hand, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and cover up that whole spot right there, okay? So might be a montage video, but we're getting it.
So, there it is, all taped off. Now it's time to get the, old, the rest of the spider landing out and the old rest of the surround out, okay? Let's do it. time to get the spider pack out i'm not generally with the spider pack i like to use a hammer and a flathead or a chisel to go ahead and just bust it and get it kind of up because once you get a little bit of it up the whole thing generally comes out um so it's a whole lot easier to do it that way for me again for me um but that's generally what i do so once you see me doing it that's exactly what i'm doing i'm just taking the flathead and getting it underneath the, where the spider pack is right here and kind of putting pressure up and tapping it that way it breaks and just comes loose all right The whole spider pack came out. Like I said, just chiseled underneath it and it all just popped right out. And most spider packs are like that. You can kind of chisel them up with like just a hammer and a flathead and just get underneath it and tap it on out. And there you go. I'll go ahead and get all this out and cleaned up. And move on to the next step. All right, so got all that stuff off. Now it's time to grind down all the rest of the old surround spider, everything that's left. We we'll have to use a grind, grinder to get it down. And what I always use is just the standard um, grinder, angle grinder from Harbor Freight. Just the Drill Master brand, nothing fancy, and a 60 grit flapper disc. Also, always remember safety first, because this CA glue that's on here can put out some real, real gnarly smells, and it'll mess your eyes up, your nose up, all of that. So make sure you're always doing this in a well ventilated area with protection if you can get it. You know what I mean? So always safety first. All right, so let's hop to it. Got the surround landing cleaned up. Got the spider landing cleaned up. All right, now before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know that some subs do come with adapter rings, spacers, etc. Make sure you put these on, especially if the manufacturer suggests that you use them. Uh, for example, this sub needs, I believe it's an 11 inch spacer, and this is it. I have to put this down for the recon to sit properly in here. Without this, it's not gonna space properly and it's gonna be off. So always make sure you got all your parts before you try to recon a sub always do all right 
So let's go. All right, so time to remove the masking tape. All right. <clears throat> now with all that grinded down, the gap is nice and clean. I'm gonna take some air, spray it off in there to make sure, but just visually looking, looks nice and clean so let's finish it up all right <clears throat> now i got the masking tape off now it's time to go ahead and place my shims down okay now if you watch my other videos i've already kind of told you what shimming was and described it but for all you new people to the channel i'm gonna go ahead and describe it one more again for y'all one more time one more again anyway all shimming is is placing something in between the coil and the gap that way it doesn't rub when it goes up and down. And you can use shims like this from Lord of Bass. You can use, this is I believe was a Fruity Pebbles uh, cereal box that I cut up. You want something with a little give but still kind of flimsy. That way the coil and everything can get in like it's supposed to. And all you do, if you have something um, like a um, cardboard or a cereal box, you just sit there and place it around evenly around the gap itself. So I, sh I don't know if you can kind of see what I'm doing. But just, you would put it in, just go all the way around evenly. Like that. As you can see what I'm doing, there's going to be four of them. So they're all the same thickness, all the same route width, give or take. And you just wrap them around like that. And now, if you don't have one of these nice shims like this, this works just as good. I'm telling you, it works just as good. So all you would do was put the cardboard shims in there like that and drop the drop in right over the top of this. It's going to go right over the top of that, so it's going to sit back there, behind this piece. Behind, and you can see it with my finger, right in there. That's where the coil is going to sit, okay? Alright, time to get this thing shimmed and glued down. Alright. Now that I got everything shimmed and cleaned up, it's time to place our bead of glue on the spider landing, okay? So we're going to take the CA glue and put it right around here, okay? So, first thing you do. Also, um, I'll link this in the description below, um, exactly what I use. This is the Hyperbond uh, 4000 on eBay. Uh, I think this bottle is like 40, 50 bucks, give or take. Again, price inflation stuff goes up, but yeah, this is what I use. Same brand for the activator. I'll link them in the description below. Last video, I tried to link them, but I think their eBay, eBay store had closed for like a couple weeks or something, but they're back up in business. I actually ordered some the other day, so this is what I use. I'm just gonna place a bead right here on the spider landing. Eighteen inch sub, boy. It's a whole lot right here. Right. And then go back in anywhere. Uh, I want to put a little bit more. If you're not comfortable, use glue. Obviously, it's not gonna hurt nothing. It's just glue. Anywhere that I'm not comfortable with it being like that's not enough glue there, and I only put a little bit more. That's what I always go back and do. Even when I got a nice bead, I still want to make sure this spider is not coming up right here. Not unless you want it to come up. All right, put a little bit there. All right, and now it is ready for the drop in. All right. All right. Kind of dusty, but I got my 18 inch nice shade version four 18 drop in right here. Um, generally, what I like to do. Um, some people go ahead and immediately spray their activator, which is fine. I'm not in a hurry, um, so I just let the glue dry naturally. So I'll spray it after, I do a light spritz and afterwards, these uh, spiders have pores in them and everything, it seeps through, so it'll still stick. It just takes a little bit longer. But of course, you can go ahead and hit it with activator quicker if you want to, totally up to you. Um, next thing you wanna do is make sure you line up your terminal leads with your terminals on your basket, okay? So I'm just gonna slide that straight down like so on that shim and easily before I smash it down, kind of make sure everything's lined up where I'm wanting it at. Get it about where you want. All right. Like 
get everything set where you want it. And then go ahead and put a little pressure down, okay? All right. So now I know it's shimmed. It shims all the way down. Set right there in that glue. I'll give you a better view of it. Set right there in that glue. So what I'm going to do on a sub such as this, I'm going to take an additional bead of glue and fill in that gap with it too. Because again, this speaker has a whole lot of motor force, you guys. And we don't want that spider coming loose. So that's what I'm doing next. So. All, right. all right. Once you got your spider seated the way you want it, take you some clamps and clamp it down, all right? All right, <clears throat> now take some activator and spritz it. All right, and just kind of let that draw for a while. While that's drying, next thing I'm gonna do on this sub, I'm actually gonna fold the surround up. Now, subs such as this, like Sundown um, subs, some of Sundown subs, and other subs with this, these bigger surrounds, it's easier if you just fold them on top of themselves like this to get to the terminals and underneath it. That way you can finish up the job a whole lot easier. So this, this does not hurt the sub at all. So you can hold it up just like so, and it'll hold itself up. See, it doesn't hurt the sub at all, all right? Time to finish it up. All right, now it's time to go ahead and put on the speaker terminal leads okay since the surround is up like so it's really easy see i could fit my whole hand right there so it'd be a whole lot easier for me to go ahead and get those allen wrenches and put them on right now versus later on so go ahead i'm going to go ahead and connect those all right on both sides all right so once you got your spider packed down your terminals everything screwed down the next thing you're going to do is take your glue and go ahead and place it where your surround landing is so just go all the way around with a nice bead of glue okay Once you've got your bead of glue down, the next thing you're gonna do is go ahead and place your surround into the glue itself. Now, once you got everything seated, the next thing you're going to do, go ahead and put your clamps on. After you get all your clamps down, just let it sit for about 30 minutes to an hour and come back and check on it.
All right, so it's been sitting for about an hour or so. So now it's time to go ahead and take all the clips off, all the clothes pins, clamps, or whatever you use to get this down. Time to take it off, okay? So montage video. So now once you got them all off, I like to go all the way around the surround and make sure it's glued down. It, you can't make a mistake. All it is is go back and fix it if you think you did. So I like to go around and put a good bit of pressure and try to pull it away. Like right there, I think it could use a little bit more glue. Right there is good. Oh, that's nice and tight. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Ain't going nowhere. That's what you want. You don't want that surround to go anywhere. Because with as much motor force this thing got, when it gets to moving full stroke, you want that to be the last thing you have to worry about. There's the surround coming un unglued. But yeah, I think it only had that one little spot that was kind of, kind of, kind of messy. So what you would do in that situation, you take a little bit more CA glue, a little bit more activator, put it there, clamp it down, and let it dry. All right. All right. So... Sub's completely done. Um, I already tested it out, ohmed it out. Everything works like it's supposed to. So now it's time to go ahead and put the dust cap on. Now again, if you've seen my other videos, I've shown you how to do it, but we got a couple newbies to the page. Let's go ahead and show them how we do it, all right? So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take your dust cap and right here on the back side where you have this, like, this plasticky type film, you're gonna wanna sand that off. Like now, I will say anything like uh, 80 grit, 100 grit sandpaper, anything like that, it, just kind of scuff it up that way the glue the glue sticks a whole lot better when you're uh, putting it down on the subwoofer okay so we go ahead and scuff this up all right so I don't know if you can really see it on camera but get that thing scuffed up pretty good that way when you put the glue down it sticks a whole lot better and easier so all right All right, so after you got it all scuffed up, next thing you're gonna wanna do is take you some masking tape, okay? And I say masking tape because when you wrap it up, you can make it into almost a handle that makes you makes it a whole lot easier to pick up the uh, dust cap. So, like that. And that way you can place it down easier once you place your glue down. So, that way you can move it around. You ain't gotta worry about it really falling down too tough. You control it, so. Masking tape, roll it on top of itself, and just place it on top like that, all right? All right. Now, after you've got your tape on your dust cap, it's time to mark. Let's how it is. It's time to mark where your dust cap's gonna go. All right. Um, now, on some subwoofers, you do have a line, a guideline that kind of shows you where the dust cap's gonna sit. You can use that. But even with that, sometimes it's a little off. Um, so what I like to do is take the dust cap and place it back down, and then just take a pencil, and you're gonna trace around it. That way you know exactly where to place your glue. And now, and then also you know exactly when you're coming back down, your guideline even more so to put your dust cap down. So you'll know. All right, let's go ahead and get that done. So after you've got your line drawn, you've got your dust cap and everything taped off, ready to go, got your glue handy, activator ready, you're gonna need something to weigh the dust cap down onto the cone while it dries. Um, something generally, something about maybe five to 10 pounds. I know it sounds crazy, but on big subs like these, you gotta have something that can put a whole lot of pressure down to hold it down. Um, luckily for me, this um, old SA8, that sits here is like the perfect weight, but you're gonna want something with a little heft to it, okay? That way you can ensure that it goes all the way into the glue and is getting in there real nice and good. So find you a weight and then we'll be ready to go. All right, so time to place my bead of glue down. I got everything marked up how I'm gonna want it. So I just go ahead and put it right there along the inside bead there of where I just made that pencil line. 
Okay. Move it right there. And again, it's your dust cap. If you're recalling this for yourself, you can't really mess it up. So just as much glue as you feel like putting down there. Uh, some of these higher excursion subs with a lot of motor force though, they will blow these dust caps off fast. Well, that's it. I've seen it. Been at shows and they just launch. It's crazy, but it looked cool, I guess. So I'm gonna put another bead of glue around. Make sure we get it seated nice and tight. All right, All right. once you got every, the bead of glue down, dust cap in hand, activator in hand, you're gonna wanna make sure you got it lined up, make sure you got a good handle on it. I do a light spritzing of activator, place it down, put a little weight on, and then the, um, the SA8 is gonna go on top of it, okay? So. Light spritzing, watch my line. There's my line. Nice and flush. A little pressure. You can take off your masking tape now. You don't need it anymore. Okay. Big old speaker. And just set it there. You want to place it kind of in the middle if you can. And don't slam it down. Just set it nice and even. And let that thing drop for about 25, 35 minutes, man. Then come back and check on it and see what, the, see what you got. All right.